today we are going to discuss about a very important screening procedure which is conducted in a histopathology lab and it is known as h and e staining and the full form of it is hematoxylin and eosin stain so what is the principle of this staining procedure so just to give you a brief idea as you all know the cells contains various uh, different types of structures and every structures varies in their ph some are some of them are acidic some of them are basic so simultaneously the staining stains is what we are using that is harris hematoxylin and eosin they, they both are acidic and basic so as you all know the concept opposite attracts so this is the principle of staining so just to elaborate the things hematoxylin and eosin are the principal stain used for the demonstration of nucleus and the cytoplasmic inclusions alum acts as a mordant and hematoxylin containing alum stains the nucleus light blue which turns red in the presence of acid the cell differentiation is achieved by treating the tissue with acid solution the counter staining is performed by using eosin solution which imparts pink color to cytoplasm so okay what are the requirements for this procedure so they are mentioned over here coupling jars dropping bottles that is 50 ml cover slips dissecting needles forceps scalpels etc ordinary filter papers dpx or canada balsam mountant slide washing tray so these are the requirements okay the regions here is hematoxylin stain how it is prepared so just check the a point dissolve 1 g of hematoxylin in about 10 ml 95% ethanol in a mortar with a pestle dissolve 20 grams of ammonia or potassium alum in 200 ml of hot distilled water mix solution a and b while hot and bring quickly to boil with constant stirring add 0.5 g of mercuric acid mercuric oxide remove the flame and cool as rapidly as possible with use of running tap water filter and store in an amber colored bottle amber colored bottle means dark brown color bottle because this harris hemist harris hemist tends to get react with uh, sunlight or maybe light maybe which can after the it can uh, go for some reaction and maybe afterwards it can cause problem with the staining the stain is stable at room temperature for 25 degree centigrade plus minus 5 degree centigrade for several months region second that eosin dissolve 1 g of yellow eosin in about 80 ml of distilled water b at 320 ml 95% ethanol at 0.4 ml of glycyl acetic acid the solution is stable at room temperature for 25 plus minus 5 degree centigrade for several months the third region used is 0.5% hydrochloric acid dilute ammonia water add 1.5 ml of 28% strong ammonia solution in distilled water and make final volume 1500 ml with distilled water okay let's start the staining procedure deep paraffinize the section as you all know the, uh, after the embedding of uh, of this tissues infected tissues in the paraffin wax is being sliced off with a very minute section then it is taken on a slide and after that we conduct the uh, this staining procedure the first step is deep paraffinize the section that means removal of excesses of paraffin wax flame the slide on a burner and then place it in xylene for 3 to 4 minutes repeat xylene treatment with agitation now take the section to water that is also known as hydration that means uh, starting from uh, in, in i mean st starting from uh, 100 100% of alcohol 
and it goes to 70 percent of alcohol i mean you have to keep that slice on a descending order of alcohol so hydrate the section by passing it through decreasing concentration alcohol baths and water the alcohol solutions are 100 percent that is absolute alcohol 90 percent 80 percent 70 percent place the section for 30 to 60 seconds in each of these alcohol solutions wash in tap water and rinse in distilled water drain the section well before staining Staining. Third step. Stain the section with hematoxin solution for 3 to 5 minutes. Wash in running tap water. But uh, wash in running tap water is a very important step, but perhaps we have to take care that uh, it, sh it shouldn't worn away the excessive of tissues. Because if the, if the uh, speed of the water is more, then, then the tissue can be worn off. So perhaps gentle water, tap water should be used for washing away. Quickly dip the slide in and out of 0.5% hydrochloric. Check the differentiation by using microscope. The nucleus should appear dark purple and rest of the tissue should appear pale. So 0.5% hydrochloric acid is, is very important because sometimes the slide gets overstained. So just to remove the excesses of staining, stains present in the uh, slide, we, we have to use this 0.5% uh, hydrochloric acid. Quickly rinse the slide in tap water for 30 to 60 seconds. It should be gentle tap water. The speed of the water should be very gentle so that it may not affect the, uh, the tissue which is attached to the slide. Dip the slide several times in dilute ammonia water. The section should appear blue colored. Wash in tap water and then rinse in 95% alcohol. Agitate the slide in a eucine solution for 10 to 60 seconds. Drain the staining solution. Now, fourth step is dehydration. That means removal of excesses of water by using alcohol. So, place the slide in 70% alcohol for 30 to 60 seconds. Place in 95% alcohol for 30 to 60 seconds, that is B part, C part. Place in absolute alcohol, two changes, 30 to 60 seconds each. Now, clearing. Place the slide twice in xylene for 30 to 60 seconds. It clears away the excessive amount of stain which has been, uh, I mean, the, the structures are being overstained. This, this also helps in remove, remove, removing of the excessive amount of stain. Then mounting. So this is a very important aspect which comes at the end, in which is uh, used, I mean which is done by the, with the help of DPX mountain or Canada balsam. So drain the excess xylem and mount DPX or Canada balsam with the cover slip. So Canada balsam and, and, and this DPX mountain is used just to preserve the slide. Maybe if, if sometimes we may require the uh, to investigate the slide. Uh, after 10 years, after 5 years, so it just preserves the things. Suppose if, if we get a uh, positive, um, um, I mean, malignancy, malignancy and cancer tissues are, uh, are available, are prepared, and we've got a very good slide, so just preserve it for referral uh, purpose. So this is it, this, this uh, mounting is very important for this procedure. So this could be the result cell nuclei, blue color, erythrocytes, red color. Muscles, connective tissue, cytoplasm, wearing shades of pink. Variation in batch number of hematoxylin, change of supplier, and stain preparation are the various factors involved in quality control of H and E staining procedure. For routine H and E staining, tissues blocked with good mixture of hemat hematophilic and eosinophilic tissue are identified as control. Multiple slice can be cut and kept aside and used as control for using following tissues, cervix, lymph node, spleen, fiber adenoma. The control slides are stained before the routine batch of slides and staining quality is confirmed. Troubleshooting and in HRD staining. So troubleshooting is a part and parcel of, of medical lab. And this is bound to happen when the batch is big, 
and when when i mean the load is workload is uh, is more is too much so these are things which which every lab person ten, tends to encounter but perhaps there are other ways to rectify the things okay let's start patchy staining can be due to less deparaffinization if the if the if you, if you find the slide is is having a patchy staining then you got to perform this staining procedure again so it is necessary to de to stain the slide and repeat staining procedure if the slide is hazy sections can result be because of less dehydration so repeat dehydration with fresh change of alcohol xylene alcohol should be replaced regularly change of region log must be maintained over differentiation will be will be cause of faint nucleus staining restain with hematoxylin less differentiation will give very dark staining of hematoxylin and eosin with no contrast prepare fresh differentiating solution pale or no nucleus staining repeat staining with fresh hematoxylin efficacy of the hematoxylin can be checked by adding few drops of hematoxylin solution to tap water tap water should turn to blue to purple immediately if color change is slow or turns red brown hematoxylin is oxidized and should not be used so this is a perfect picture of the harrison hematoxylin staining the outcome the product of this stain and this is a very I mean, it shows a very clear structure of the cells see this structure it is so clear nuclei and cells they can they can be identified so easily look at this thank you so the ideal uh, ideal HND staining is done with full concentration and with full diligence. The more the experience is, the more good quality of staining it comes. Because I I always wanted to emphasize in this in this uh, uh, lecture that this staining is basically in which in uh, is is a thing in which we are going to diagnose malignancy and cancer. If the patient is suffering from cancer and so it can be diagnosed easily if the quality of HND staining is done properly. So friends and students do the, this staining procedure with full diligence and intelligence so that the outcome should be enhancing and happy. And I mean the diagnosis is made of good quality. Thank you so much.